Good day, my name is Peter Frick from the West Coast Maritime Institute here in Canada. Welcome to our second video on international trade and transport. Our subject for today is maritime transport. But before we go any further, let's just remind ourselves about the world marketplace. As we know, the world is a big marketplace because there are 180 nations all trading with each other. We know that this beautiful planet we live on is 70% is sea and 30% land and 90% of international trade goes by sea. Of this, just before we leave this, the world is 360 degrees round and it turns on its axis once every 24 hours so for every 15 degrees there's one hour time difference. So do not phone me at three o'clock in the morning, it's not appreciated. Right. Why is shipping the most economical form of transport? Why it does it cost one dollar by sea, five dollars by rail, seven dollars by road, fifteen dollars by air? Well, the sea is free. You don't have to pay to use it more about that just now. Of maritime transport that carries most of the international trade, 86% is bulk cargo and 14% is containers. I would like you to have a look at this vehicle that we call a ship. It's normally, an average size ship is around about 30,000 tons dead weight. That's its carrying capacity. And that's going to cost the region in about $30,000 a day. And it has a crew of 20. I've written there again just to remind us that the sea is a free highway. Now this trade that we were talking about a minute ago, the delivered costs of getting it there, removing it by sea, is dictated by the delivery cost and the production cost. And the production cost is about 60% and the delivery cost is about 40%. So that's a very important part of logistics. We're going to have a quick look at the shape of a ship. This is a bulk carrier that I've drawn here in three sections. There's the bow entry section, there's the midships part which is your cargo compartments in the, and the stern which provides the propulsion and direction. Propulsion is, and direction is dictated by the propeller uh, through the engine room and the bridge up here. Now you'll notice that I have drawn this with the propeller and the rudder deeper in the water. In other words, she's trimmed by the stern because that is how she goes through the water a lot easier. And the speed of the ship is measured in knots, which is sea miles per hour. We're going to cut the ship in half now and have a look at it from what we call tran transversely. Now the inside of the ship has a specific uh, cubic, which is either what we call grain cubic or um, bulk cubic. So there's a certain cubic in there. So if we know the stowage factor of a particular type of cargo, we can work out how much will go in there. That's capacity by cubic. The next capacity is by mass. As Archimedes said, a body wholly or partially immersed in a liquid will displace its own mass. So the more we put in, the deeper it's going to go in the water. The depth in the water is called the draft. So a ship has a light or empty draft and it has a loaded draft. Now it stands to reason that you cannot go on putting cargo in until the thing sinks. So there is a line on the ship's side called, called the pencil mark which shows you how deep the ship can be loaded in the water. The difference between the loaded draft and the light draft is called the ship's dead weight carrying capacity, the capacity by mass. Now the ships that transport the cargo actually go on a voyage. And a voyage consists of port time and passage time. 
passage time there. A ship can load in six days, do passage in ten days, discharge in four days and come back again. That is what we call a cycle. And those of you who are doing port and terminal operations, it's very important that you get used to examining things in cycle and measuring the time that it takes to do things. And let's just remind ourselves the time is distance over speed. Now there's two major types of transport that we said later earlier on. 86% is bulk cargo and 14% is containers. That's mostly finished goods. The bulk cargo is mostly raw, mater raw material. It moves in amounts up to 100,000 tons at a time from port to port. The on the other side, we have containers which contain finished goods which can weigh up to 24 and tons and even higher if it's a 40-foot container. This is one-off large amounts of goods. This is smaller amounts of goods in a container but it's on a name day service. This high value cargo, the client wants to know when he's getting it. Intermodal transport from seller to buyer, door to door. Intermodal means between methods. Goes by road, ship and rail. Through the whole transport system. The client wants it moving through that complete undamaged on time and the main vehicle within this of course is the container. The container is a metal box that is built to be a component of the ship when it goes to sea. So it is built to the same strength as the ship and it has to be classed by a classification society. The main letter to remember when you're looking at a container is CCC. Down in the bottom left hand side in the back of the container is a CSC plate. That stands for Container Safety Convention. That is the container's license. That says that it is being built, supervised by a classification society, and, and it is, its strength is within the requirements of the International Convention on Safe Containers. So this is a vehicle without wheels that moves through the transport system. <coughs> I'm going to end off there and say thank you so much for watching video clip number two.